Dear colleagues, first of all, I would like to congratulate with you for having really managed to organize this Congress in such difficult times for Ukraine. It is very important for you not to lose your courage to continue to offer your help to patients in need and to improve your knowledge through continuous medical education initiatives. Let's hope that next year peace will prevail in Ukraine and I will have the chance to meet with all of you in another osteoporosis congress. Last but not least, I would like to thank the organizing committee and Professor Natalia Grigorieva for inviting me to present my lecture on Helicobacter pylori infection and osteoporosis. Helicobacter pylori is a gram-negative and spiral shaped bacterium dwelling in the gastric epithelium and has an influence on approximately 50% of the global population, especially those living in developing countries. Likewise, osteoporosis is one of the most common metabolic bone diseases, characterized by decreased bone mineral density, increased bone fragility, and then increased susceptibility to fracture, especially in the spine and hip. Osteoporosis has become a major health concern for both individuals and societies. Osteoporosis has huge adverse impacts on life quality and is associated with increased morbidity rates. There are similarities between these two clinical entities, Helicobacter pylori infection and osteoporosis. As they both affect older ages, they are both common multifactorial and heterogenic disorders of increasing incidence and both constitute major challenges for public health systems globally due to huge clinical and economic burdens. The prevalence of Helicobacter pylori infection is approximately 30% in developed countries, 80% in developing countries and up to 90% in patients with dyspepsia. In North Europe and North America, about one third of adults are infected and in South and East Europe, South America and Asia, the prevalence of Helicobacter pylori is often higher than 50%. Also in Europe, about half of women and one-fifth of men aged over 50 years old develop pathological fractures in hip, spine, forearm or humerus due to osteoporosis during their remaining lifetime. The same situation happens in other countries or districts such as Japan and Taiwan. In the global map of health burden of low bone mineral density related fractures in a 2019 study, data from 204 countries and territories were analyzed. The five countries with the highest disability adjusted life years number in fractures due to low bone mineral density in 2019 were India, China, United States of America, Japan and Germany. The countries with the highest number of deaths due to low bone mineral density related fractures in 2019 were India, China, the United States of America, France and Germany. As we can see from the map, this is the opposite compared with Helicobacter pylori prevalence, which is higher in the developing countries, as I said before. Helicobacter pylori infection has been associated with numerous extraintestinal disorders, many of which have the potential to influence bone and muscle status, such as autoimmune thyroid diseases, diabetes mellitus, dyslipidemia, obesity, osteoporosis, and primary hyperparathyroidism. My PhD thesis was on the relationship between Helicobacter pylori infection and glaucoma, which is another intriguing extraintestinal manifestation associated with Helicobacter pylori infection. Osteoporosis is a major cause of bone fracture and subsequent morbidity and mortality in the elderly population. Several clinical and demographic parameters, including aging, menopause, parity, inflammatory disease, hormonal, gastrointestinal, renal, metabolic disorders like vitamin D deficiency, 
obesity, weight loss may affect bone mass and result in bone mineral density changes and osteoporosis. In the most recent systematic review and meta-analysis to evaluate the association between Helicobacter pylori infection and osteoporosis, the overall odds ratio was obtained based on 20 studies involving Helicobacter pylori and osteoporosis, including osteopenia. The meta-analysis included a total of 8,788 patients and healthy controls. As the existence of obvious heterogeneity occurred, as you can see from the slide, a random effect model was used and the pooled results of odds ratio uh, were calculated to 1.37, indicating Helicobacter pylori infection was significantly associated with increased odds of osteoporosis and osteopenia. Given that obvious heterogeneity existed, subgroup analyses were performed based on the potential confounding factors. All 20 studies were involved in these subgroup analyses. In this slide, you can see both osteoporosis and osteopenia were significantly associated with Helicobacter pylori infection with an odds ratio of 1.61 for osteoporosis and 1.22 for osteopenia. Although the odds ratio was a little higher in the osteoporosis group, the meta-regression analysis showed no significant difference between these two groups. The meta-analysis also showed that the association between Helicobacter pylori infection and osteoporosis was significant in men and both sexes, but not in women. When stratified by countries, the meta-analysis found significant associations between Helicobacter pylori infection and osteoporosis in China, Japan and Korea. All of three were Asian countries, which indicates that many other factors are associated with geography and may affect the results. As you can see in this slide, the bone mineral density alterations between Helicobacter pylori positive and Helicobacter pylori negative participants were minus 0.01 for hip, minus 0.94 for lumbar, and minus 0.04 for femur, using random effects model as obvious heter heterogeneity existed. No significant associations were observed. Let's move on to the pathogenetic mechanisms involved between Helicobacter pylori infection and the um, induction or development of osteoporosis and osteopenia. First of all, Helicobacter pylori induces the release of cytokines such as tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukins 1 and 6, which may cause bone turnover indirectly. Furthermore, a low vitamin B12 is associated with Helicobacter pylori. Of note, if the serum vitamin B12 levels are decreased, then the folate becomes trapped as methyl tetrahydrofolate and interrupts folate-related DNA synthesis, which is an important factor for bone remodeling. Therefore, the decrease in vitamin B12 may lead to decreased bone mineral density and osteoporosis. Finally, Helicobacter pylori may decrease calcium absorption. It is known that Helicobacter pylori causes gastric mucosal atrophy and decreases acid secretion. Thus, eradication of Helicobacter pylori may increase calcium absorption and stop the process of osteoporosis through decreasing the levels of inflammatory cytokines and improving gastric mucosal atrophy. In this figure, you can briefly see an outline of the mechanisms by which Helicobacter pylori infection and proton PAP inhibitor use can result in an increased risk of osteoporosis and fracture. Helicobacter pylori infection, as well as PPI use, may lead to the release of pro-inflammatory cytokines and malabsorption of nutrients such as calcium, magnesium and vitamin B12. It can also cause hormonal imbalance, including increased gastric secretion 
and reduce ghrelin and circulating estrogen levels. Regarding hormonal factors, chronic hypergastrinemia can occur as a result of hypochloridria and achloridria caused by Helicobacter pylori infection, which can lead to parathyroid hyperplasia, resulting in increased PTH secretion and decreased bone mineral density. Furthermore, Helicobacter pylori infection can destroy gastric oxyntic glands that secrete ghrelin. Ghrelin, besides appetite stimulation, promotes osteoblast proliferation and differentiation. Lower ghrelin levels can decrease bone formation and increase the risk of bone fracture. Finally, a decrease in total free and bioavailable estradiol levels was found in patients of both genders with Helicobacter pylori infection. The gastric parietal cells express aromatase enzyme and aid in the peripheral conversion of androgen to estrogen. The loss of gastric parietal cells due to Helicobacter pylori infection can thus lead to a decrease in the pool of estrogen, causing a potential link to both fragility. Several limitations do exist in the relevant published studies. First of all, concerning seropositivity. Helicobacter pylori infection is usually confirmed by serological testing, which cannot distinguish, however, between current and past infection. Such a distinction is crucial to confirm an active systemic inflammation. In addition, seropositivity alone in elderly subjects without any dyspeptic symptoms cannot be considered as an active systemic inflammation. Secondly, a multifactorial etiology. Several factors may affect bone mass and make it impossible to determine the dependent association between Helicobacter pylori infection and osteoporosis. There are also confounders in Helicobacter pylori infection. In patients with Helicobacter pylori infection, many associated factors, including dyspepsia, administration of proton pump inhibitors, as we said before, Changes in diet and disorder in calcium absorption may affect bone mass and confound the results. There are also confounders in osteoporosis. Patients older age, menopause, previous pregnancies and lack of physical activity due to knee osteoarthritis are the most common causes of bone mineral density changes. There are other diseases involved in osteoporosis development. For example, I diagnosed patients at earlier stage of inflammatory arthritis, like rheumatoid arthritis, are at greater risk of bone loss. Conditions such as chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and chronic renal disease are associated with inflammation and so are at greater risk of bone loss. There are also problems defining osteoporosis. Diagnosis of osteoporosis is usually based on the bone mineral density T-score in older patients, which may underestimate the real prevalence of osteoporosis. Osteoarthritis is prevalent in older subjects, and the presence of osteophytes results in falsely elevation of bone mineral density and in underestimation of osteoporosis, particularly at the spine. Osteoarthritis is also a confounder. Distribution and the severity of osteoarthritis may differ between the comparison groups. There are also problems concerning the design of the studies, which most of them are cross-sectional and case control. And we all know that correlation does not indicate causation. There are also problems concerning the duration of active Helicobacter pylori infection which is crucial in the contribution in the development of osteoporosis and may be difficult to be determined. Concerning female sex, the sex of participants may affect the results. Women and postmenopausal women are independent risk factors of osteoporosis. The relationship between osteoporosis and Helicobacter pylori infection has been shown to be significant in men, but not in women.
Future studies on Helicobacter pylori a bone mineral density will require to show a longitudinal asse assessment of the patients with active systemic inflammation confirmed by urea breath test or by gastric biopsy. Nevertheless, treatment of patients with dyspepsia and active inflammation can affect the impact of Helicobacter pylori on bone mineral density changes and confound the results. Ladies and gentlemen, taken together, significant increased odds of osteoporosis are observed in patients with Helicobacter pylori infection. The clinician should pay more attention to the patients infected with Helicobacter pylori by using DEXA scan, especially those patients with chronic gastritis. The results should be cautiously interpreted considering the heterogeneity and the fact that all studies were non-randomized and retrospective. Further studies are needed to explore the mechanisms and the confounding factors between Helicobacter pylori and osteoporosis. And with that, I thank you very much for your attention. Velike Spasibi.